Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for tuning into another episode of Revealed. We got something pretty cool in the shop uh, this week. Come take a look. So we're working on a kitchen project that has a peninsula that separates the kitchen area from the dining area. Now where I'm standing would be the kitchen and these would be the upper cabinets. One caveat being these upper cabinets are actually suspended from the ceiling. So there's gonna be about 17 inches between the top of this cabinet and the ceiling with no supports on this end, which is where the wall is going to be. And coming out into the room, we only have one post that's mounted in the ceiling that connects to these cabinets to support this entire run. So the challenge was figuring out how to support the weight of all of these cabinets, both metal and solid wood, over 10 feet. So this entire run is about 128 inches. It's only gonna be supported by this post coming down from the ceiling, as well as being mounted to the wall on the far side. So we figured out this design and several weeks ago, we actually got on site during the framing phase and mounted a massive steel post in the ceiling. And during the board and plaster phase, our friends over at Trowel Inc. came in, put stop bead around that post and boarded and plastered as they typically would. So now we have a beautiful Venetian plastered ceiling with a powder coated post coming down from that ceiling to support this cabinet. Now, if we just had that post bolt to this cabinet here and the wall, we would still probably get a lot of sag in this cabinet just due to the overall weight of this cabinet and the flexibility of this 3 16 steel plate. So what we had to do was actually add a box beam through the center of these cabinets. So if I open up these doors, you can see exactly what I'm talking about here. That was just part of this challenge. So the post coming down from the ceiling, we have an eight by eight plate on the bottom. That's gonna have bolts that mount through our steel, through our one inch cabinet, and into, if you come around and look under here, this eight by eight plate that is attached to the beam. So the idea here is that these cabinets need to go in first, slide into this metal cased opening, all three of the cabinets. Then we need to install this beam, sliding it in from one end. Since our outside end is seen and finished, we can't put any holes or slots to slide that post through. So that only leaves the one end to slide this post in. But the tricky part is adding this eight by eight plate. If we welded this eight by eight plate onto our beam, we would have to slide all of that through, making the holes in all of these cabinets quite large. So we actually came up with a system where this plate is bolted to the beam after the beam is slid in. The way we're doing that is through these holes on the top. So we have these three holes here that are bored through the steel through our one inch cabinet, which gives us access to the top side of this plate, which is where those bolts are so that we're not seeing anything from the inside when we do open this cabinet up. Again, this allows us to slide that beam all the way in from one side, slip that plate onto the notch that's in the beam to receive that plate, and then bolt it up through the actual cabinet, mounting it to the plate already in the ceiling. Once this is mounted to that plate in the ceiling, we will cover up all three of those holes, so we're never gonna see them again. We do have a few other holes along the top as well as the bottom. Those are for actually screwing the cabinet to the steel. There's a little bit of ebb and flow to the steel and the cabinetry, so we wanna make sure that those are gonna be nice and flat when we do finish this. You'll also notice that right now, the steel case and the steel beam are left raw. This was so we could get everything assembled and dry fit here in our shop, once we are finished with all these pieces, we'll go ahead and send all of the metal parts out to the powder coater and have them powder coated in black to match the post in the ceiling. In fitting these cabinets to the opening, we did leave a little bit of space to account for that powder coating, as well as the finish on the actual cabinets, along with giving us a little bit of room to slide these cabinets in when all is said and done. We are going to leave this beam visible from the interior, so when you do open these cabinets, you will see that powder coated beam. Now, when it comes to the cases and getting those cut to fit this beam, we actually made a router jig 
to cut out the shape of that beam. Again, leaving a little bit of room for powder coat, finish, and a little extra space for sliding that beam in. The blue tape here is to protect that edge banding while we are sliding this post in and out before finish and before this steel is actually powder coated. Right now it is still a little bit dirty. So once that tape comes off, you may actually see a little bit of space around these notches. So we did go ahead and edge band all of these U-shapes. So as I mentioned, this suspended cabinet is visible from three sides. This here being the back side, there is a dining room that is going right where I'm standing now. Below here is going to be additional cabinetry that is on the back side of that kitchen peninsula. These panels are all just fixed panels so that you have interior storage space on the working side of the kitchen. But you have these open cabinets here on the bottom. And then on the end, you do have two additional cubbies here. Now remember on the back side of this, that is where the uppers on the range wall will actually be. So we don't have access to these spaces from the kitchen side. So these will only be accessible from the dining room side. We're using touch latches on this side, so it'll be no hardware, giving us a nice clean look across this entire back space. The other important thing about this cabinet here is that you may see this line going across here. So that's actually an access panel. So once we do get this thing hoisted into place, we can pop off this panel, which gives us access to yet another flange from that beam that we can bolt to the wall. If we come around the backside again, you can see this is the part that's actually gonna be up against the wall. There's going to actually be stone that sits between the face of this metal and the actual wall. In this case, it's actually going to be a poured concrete countertop and backsplash. So that's the material that's gonna be between the stone and the wall, which is why this bracket is sticking out so far from the backside of this case. So the backside of this bracket here is actually going to mount directly to the framing, which we already have substantial blocking in that wall to help support this weight. And you can see there's a few holes drilled through this steel plate, giving us access to these bolts here so we can bolt everything to the wall when the time comes. So another cool feature about this metal cabinet is this channel here. So there's actually a light rail being installed all the way through this cabinet from this wall, stopping short by one inch on the other side. When we get this cabinet flipped over or installed, we can go ahead and show you what that's going to look like. But for now, with everything inside there, I unfortunately can't flip this over and show you. So now coming back into the kitchen side of everything here, let's walk through some of the features of the actual cabinetry itself. Dude, no, this is in the wrong spot. This entire cabinet is actually upside down. So this open space is here and is the hood cabinet. So once we flip this over, so this piece here will continue along with the frame on the perpendicular cabinets running all the way across. And when the open cabinet is here in its proper location. So as far as the colors here, this is a slip matched white oak that will actually be going in a zero sheen. So super dull on that sheen. All of the doors are going to be painted in a white color and all of the powder coat will be done in black. All of our doors have this integrated pull detail. And the reason for that is actually because of this corner right here. The intent was to continue this one inch frame around all of the cabinetry, including in the corners and not have any fillers. If we went with a typical hardware, once these doors are open, the hardware on this door would hit and damage the adjacent door, even with the restrictor clips that are available. Yes, we could have gone ahead and used, you know, the chain or the arm that stops the door, but that's a lot of extra hardware. So we opted for the integrated pull on all of the doors to do away with that and keep everything nice and sleek. So with these integrated poles, one thing that we do to seal that open MDF is we actually use a mixture of glue and water to really soak into those pores and seal them up. This makes the finishing process much easier and it helps add another layer of protection once everything is finished um, and is being used later on down the road. So with these integrated poles and being a completely inset cabinet, we do have these filler strips in the top of the cabinet. They are just cut to size right now. They're actually not in place, so they do have some flexibility. But the idea there is once they are installed, 
these doors will close, rest up against that stop and end flush with the frame. One of the other little details here on this piece is our metal frame is only 15 inches wide and our cases are 15 and a half. This leaves a quarter inch reveal from the face of the wood to the face of the frame. So what we've done is on the backside for these fixed panels, we went ahead and carried that quarter inch reveal through there as well, giving us a little bit of extra depth on the backside of this piece. So fortunately this space is large and pretty well wide open. So once we get all of our pieces inside the home, we're going to start by taking the metal case and putting that on the floor just as it is so that we can get the rest of the work done. From there, we'll put in these cabinets. We won't have the doors on the cabinets, not that that really matters so much right now. Once the cabinets are into place, we will go ahead and take the 10 foot plus long beam, slide that all the way in from one end, working our way in those notches until we get down to the end here. Then we will bolt that plate on through the top and fasten our cabinets through all of these pre-drilled holes. Once we have that assembled, we're gonna go ahead and put it on a lift or two, get that hoisted up, get it approximately level. We'll bolt it onto this side because this is our fixed point. Once we have that connection made, we'll come over to the other end, make sure that the overall cabinet is dead level and get that side of the beam bolted to the wall. From there, we can go ahead and fine tune get everything else installed and we are good to go. All right, so as you can see, this has been a super challenging and super fun project. The guys in the shop have been crushing this. I mean, come on, just look at this. So big shout out to Ian and James for getting this done. It looks killer. And we will continue to share the progress of this piece as it continues. We are super excited to share this one with you guys once it gets installed. This is gonna be something pretty special when all is said and done. So we're looking forward to sharing that journey with you guys. So please drop us a couple comments, subscribe to that channel, tell your friends, and we will catch you guys on the next one.